Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So a little over a year ago, I created a video titled something along the lines of the worst habits in landscape photography that was purely based off of the, the bad habits I created when I first started down the, the outdoor photography road. But I never made a follow-up video to that, speaking to the, the habits, I guess, that uh, I've created over the last few years that have had the most dramatic and positive impact on my photography. Now, I think, or actually I know, that everyone's workflow is a little bit different. And what works for you might not work for me, and what works for me might not work for you, but my hope is that you'll be able to pick up at least one nugget of information throughout this entire video that you can apply to your photography that'll have a positive impact on how you go about your landscape photography moving forward. Now, anyone who knows me know, or knows me well knows that I'm a naturally anxious person and anything that can slow me down and calm me down typically will help me to achieve a better result. So many of the transformative habits I've created over the last few years all point towards forcing variety while at the same time slowing me down, which in turn helps my photography by, I guess, establishing a more uh, like methodical and evenly paced approach. So without further ado, and these are not ranked in any specific order whatsoever, but the very first habit is something that I call drop the baggage. And what drop the baggage is, and this is probably the most commonly heard about thing to do when you get on location, but I kind of take it a step further. So we've all heard a thousand times about when you get on location, don't immediately just put your bag on the ground, pull out your tripod and put your camera on your tripod and start firing away. You know, you want to take your time. But what I found helps me out the best is to not just walk around with my bag on my back and my, my camera in my bag and kind of holding my tripod. I put everything on the ground, put the tripod on the ground, put the bag, take the bag off my back, put that on the ground and walk around with nothing. Maybe just your, your phone in your pocket. But what that does is basically it takes me out of that kind of photography mode, that photography mindset, and just lets me kind of connect with the, uh, the, the location that I'm in. It calms me down a little bit because it does remove the, I guess, the pressures of why I am at a specific location. And, you know, obviously I'm at a location to photograph it, but when I don't have a camera in hand or a tripod in hand or have anything photography related with me, I kind of get out of that photography mindset. And that kind of helps me to, to slow down a little bit, helps me to calm down. Now, you definitely want to make sure that you're not around 100 other people and kind of leave your bag off to the side because that's definitely not safe. But most of the time, you'll probably find yourself alone. And uh, I just put your bag down, take all your stuff, put it down, and just kind of walk around. If you see a composition that might work out for you, you can always pull your phone out and kind of frame up your, your subject just to kind of get a better idea of what it will look like. But I would highly recommend taking everything photography related, putting it on the, on the ground and just kind of focusing on the overall environment, the overall location to see if that kind of sparks those creative juices a little bit. Now, the second habit in this one is huge. This one has helped me so much and it continues to help me. And basically it's something that I call create versions. And it has to do with post-processing because the way that I go about post-processing my images now, it's a multi-day process, and I usually will create three versions of every photograph. The very first version is the initial edit, and I'll go ahead and create that. And here's a good example right here. This is an image that I shared uh, just last week on Instagram, a brand new photograph, never shared before, but this is the initial edit right here. And then once I create that initial edit, I'll go ahead and just let it sit and I'll revisit it the next day, maybe in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, but then I'll go ahead and create another version. Now I won't go ahead and make changes to this version. I'll create a virtual copy. You can just right click it and just hit create virtual copy. And then I will make a secondary edit. And here's the secondary edit right here because I felt that this one, the white balance was a little bit off and I felt that it lacked a little bit of contrast. So I went ahead and made this change right here. Definitely added more contact, contrast, corrected the white balance a little bit. And then once I make that second edit, do the same thing. Let it rest for a day, revisit it the next day or maybe two days after that, and then create a third edit, which is your final version. And I've been doing this for a, a couple years now, and that third final version is always, hands down, better than the first two versions. And, and here is the version that I shared um, on Instagram and social media last week. This is the version that I like the most. And as you can see, the kind of the evolution of this, this is where it started. This is the second iteration of it. And then here is the third and final version right here. And I absolutely like the third version better. So creating versions. So whenever I, I go to start and edit, I always know that I'm not gonna finish it this day. It's gonna take me at least two days and it's gonna take at least three versions to go through. 
And I think what's so powerful is by creating those virtual copies because it gives you that reference point to be able to go back and see what you have done. So being able to see where I started and see what that second edit looks like and to see what that third edit looks like definitely helps me to understand what changes I need to make and how those changes impact the overall look and feel and mood of the overall photograph. So that is definitely a great habit that has really helped my post-processing over the last couple of years. Now the third habit, and I'm not really sure if this is a habit or a trait or a quality or a tactic, but whatever, whatever you want to call it, I, I call it less is more. And basically when I first got started with uh, outdoor photography or photography in general, I kept hearing about the, the holy trinity of lenses. And you had to have a, a wide angle zoom, you had to get an ultra wide angle lens, maybe a prime lens, a mid range zoom, a telephoto, a super telephoto, and, and I did that. And oftentimes when I would go on location, I was carrying four, five, sometimes six lenses. And nine times out of 10, I was only going to use, I was only using one or maybe two of those lenses. And most of those shots were taken with a wide angle zoom or a telephoto lens. So those are really the only two lenses that I have been using for the last couple of years. Even with my new GFX system, I paired it down to just two. This is the 23 millimeter prime, and this is the 100 to 200. So when I'm on location, what's so powerful about this is that it simplifies things so much. And I'm kind of a, actually I'm not kind of a, I'm very much a simple guy, I guess I'm a simpleton. And I like things that are very easy. I like th things that are, I guess, not cluttered, easy to think about. And for me, when I'm on location, I only have two choices to make. It's either go wide or go long. On every single composition, those are the only lenses that I have. Those are the only lenses I own and those are the only lenses that I will be bringing with me. And that just simplifies everything. Only being a, just really the only thought, wide or long, that was it. You don't have to worry about, do I go wide or ultra wide? Or do I go telephoto or super telephoto? Or do I use a mid-range zoom? Or maybe I should pull out a prime. That's just a lot of, of um, clutter in your mind. And that just kind of gets me off track, makes me a little bit anxious, much like everything does. But less is more when it comes to lenses. And, and paring down my lens lineup to only two, and like I said, I've been doing this for the last few years now, has drastically helped my overall workflow. It's actually helped my overall enjoyment while I'm on location as well. Now, the fourth and final habit and is something that I call storyboards. And if you've ever seen a storyboard from a you know, Hollywood production movie, it's a, it's a series of images with text. And, and basically the purpose of all these images is to tell the story of the movie. And when I first got started with photography, I, when I would go on location, I would basically find my composition and I would sit on that composition the entire time, just taking image after image after image, trying to get the conditions right. I would ultimately get home and I would have just a series of images that look identical and I would pick the very best one. But the long, long story short, I would just end up with one image. So from an entire shoot, one photograph. And it started to feel kind of like a waste to me. So I wanted to start, and I've been doing this for about, maybe about two years, a year and a half, two years now, but I try and create a storyboard Every time I go on location, that storyboard consists of three images. The very first image is going to be a wide angle shot that's basically going to have the, the entire scene in its totality. The second image is going to be a more intimate scene with a longer lens. And the third image is going to be kind of a wild card. It could be really whatever you want. And here's a good example right here. So this is my, my intimate version of this location from my recent trip to Utah. I shot this with the, the 100 to 200 right here. And then the next image right here is from uh, is obviously from much farther back than the first image and then here is the image that i shared last week and this is kind of a, a more zoomed back area and when you put when you look at all of these images together let me highlight them all hit shortcut key m this is kind of the storyboard right here and you can kind of see how they they all kind of go together they're all edited a little bit similar not identical but similar types of uh, an editing style with across all three of these but you can see that this is kind of the intimate detail right here. And this image was captured in this area right here. And then if you walk back, actually, I don't know if I walked forward or walked back, but then I, this is where I was able to capture this tree right here. But all three of these images tells the story of this location. And why that's so powerful for me is that it gets me out of that, that single image mindset. It forces me to create variety. It forces me to create that storyboard because I want the viewer to be able to see all three of these images together and have a better feeling of this overall location versus just one of these images stand, uh, standing alone or just, just one of these images by itself is what I'm trying to say. But creating that storyboard, a three image storyboard, I think is very, very powerful and it has really helped me 
when I get on location to kind of look at things a little bit differently. And it helps me to better understand the story that I'm trying to tell the viewer by, through a series of images versus just one. So those are the four habits that have that I've changed over the years that have really helped not only my post-processing, but also my on-location workflow and just my overall enjoyment of outdoor photography as well. So I really do hope you were able to pick up at least one piece of information from that that you can apply to your workflow or your post-processing moving forward. That'll definitely help you have a little bit more fun and um, maybe come away with images that uh, you are um, excited about moving forward. So before I do wrap up this week's video, I do want to say just a, a real big thanks again to the sponsor of this week's video, which is uh, Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends and page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And if you have any questions about uh, anything in this video, definitely leave me a comment below and I'll definitely get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.